This is No You Are Earth, and I have the enormous privilege to be <laughs> with John Young. Mm. So John is known as a tracker and also a bird language person, but to me, you are really known as someone who can extract the magic who is within somebody. I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, like, the birds, they are a big thing for you. Like, what, why is that? Well, <clears throat> I think because, you know, m mindfulness is getting popular now, right? Yes. So people are all, all, are all about understanding a way of being present actually means something. Yes. Yeah, so they think about, how do I get that in modern times? Oh, well, I can meditate, right? And meditation works. Um, and then there's also something else that works that's really, our, our nervous system is literally hardwired for this, which is survival, you know? Um, the number one priority of the nervous system is to keep us alive, yeah. first and foremost. So we have a very ancient DNA level memory beyond our consciousness, so you don't even have to think about it. It's there, okay? And you know this yes. already intuitively. Yes. We all know it intuitively. If there's weird body language from people, we know. Yeah. As long as we're paying attention. So interestingly, you know, and I've, I've been mentoring people in <clears throat> Nature Connection for forever, you know, most of my life. I'm, I'm 59 and I started mentoring at, 50, at, at 19, so 40 years wow. of this. Um, you know, and I was mentored that way by uh, an, a man who, who was mentored by an elder from the Apache lineage. And bird language and tracking are kind of big, big skills of, of that lineage. Yeah. Um, and I've seen over and over through the years that I can tell people the value of using all their senses. Yes. And tuning into the moment and listening for bird language. And they'll just keep thinking about it. Yeah. We'll step out the door right after a good lecture with all the neurobiology and mindfulness teachings, everything, and they'll go right back to not paying attention because yeah. nothing is there to, to activate that old hard wiring. We're in danger. Well, then I started teaching in the wilderness, like in the Denali National Park with uh, black, uh, grizzly bears all around us. And we send people out to sit uh, and, you know, for quiet moments by themselves, and they come back with stories with big eyes of the steaming pile of something left behind by a grizzly bear yes and the smell of wet dog in the air and all their hair standing up and they're now paying attention you yeah. know and the littlest bird alarm goes off and they turn and look you know and then i went to visit my friends uh in the kalahari <clears throat> and i brought people from our world uh, the modern world uh, to meet these ancient people who live in this ancient way um and as soon as the the, the driver who was our guide was on our way to meet these people he Somebody jumped off the truck to, to have a little bio break, and um, he said, where are you going? You can't just jump off the truck. This isn't America, you yeah. know. The grass is waist high. There could be a lion just behind that grass. Wow. You could get yourself killed or somebody else. Yeah, you it's know? really real. It's real, yeah. you know, and, and when people started seeing their first African lion tracks, and then when they started to see African lions with their own eyes, same thing. Everybody went directly into this place of paying attention. Yes. The slightest bird alarm and they're looking, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, dang, you know, because five days of that kind of paying attention, they drop into a whole nother level of mindfulness. And they start to get mindfulness in a deeper, more authentic way that's coming from here instead yes. of from here. Yes. And, and if I could bottle that and just spray it on people, I would. But, you know, we don't have the large predators anymore in most of our lives, right? And so um, I started experimenting. I said, I wonder if if we could really attune them to the sheer uh, enormous concern that the songbirds have uh, for a house cat coming towards their baby or from a raven trying to steal their eggs yes. or from um, the cooper's hawk or the, in, in, the, in the UK it would be the sparrow hawk that hunts for songbirds and is really good at it. Mm. You know, that's the lion mm. for the songbird. Yeah. Um, and if our mirror neurons have anything to do with it, which is what I came to understand, that if the birds are nervous, our nervous system is designed to become nervous so that okay. we don't have to reason okay. it out. Yeah. So if there's a sense in the birds and animals around us that something's up, then you get a funny feeling and then you start looking around and, oh, you see the leopard hiding over there, right? And you avoid the ambush. And I think that's why we're, we're wired that way. Mm. Well, I thought, well, can we leverage the mirror neurons 
and the number one priority of the nervous system. Yes. And since the extreme sensitivity in the birds for their number one predator, which is the occipiter or the Cooper's hawk, the sparrow hawk. And we started to experiment. And lo and behold, we were getting results really fast. But the first thing we had to do was get people to realize that, you know, the songbirds are get worried like you do. You know, they're not just singing and they're not just random and they're definitely not just stupid birds randomly flying from here to there. They're actually, they've got a plan, you yeah. know? And when you start to realize that, you drop in and you realize that, you know, Okay, they got to feed their young. They got to defend their territory. They got to watch out for nest robbers. You know, they got to watch out for things trying to get their babies. They got to watch out for the hawk trying to get them. Yeah. And as soon as you start figuring that out in your own backyard, your nervous system can be switched on and you can get the results without having to go into the deep Kalahari. Yeah. Or into the African, uh, Alaskan wilderness and grizzly country. Brilliant. It's brilliant. It's yeah. right. It works in the city. It, so we have 61 places around the U.S. that are now doing this with people. But wow. it's, it's not bird watching. No. And that's the difference. Yes. Right? Bird language is, okay, I'm going to watch things in three-dimensional context. Okay. I'm going to see the body language of the bird. I'm literally going to use this part of myself because if a raven is on, a, on the nest of a blackbird or a robin in, in the U.S. and it's coming close and looking for that nest the parents just start getting really upset yeah and this part of your nervous bed will literally twitch with every sound so tink 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 but simultaneously because we're so connected because of mirror neurons yeah and, and it's amazing really and as soon as you realize it you're like whoa i'm my nervous system is picking up stuff that my brain is not picking up yes right and uh so that's that's how it starts and then you're putting things together in context so Whereas bird watching, we're always out looking for the next cool bird, which of course I love doing. Nothing yeah. I like more than seeing for the first time this beautiful species, which I really dig. Yes. It's kind of like opening a present, right? Yeah. But bird language comes from sitting in your own backyard, on your own back stoop, you know, or in the local park and being in the same place. And that is every one day. of the brilliant, brilliant things about yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Because it can be completely local to wherever you happen to be. Exactly. Yeah. And the birds are a lot cheaper than meditation workshops. <laughs> they don't charge you yeah. a thing to teach you this stuff. Yeah, and, and so um, through that kind of like expanded um, sensuousness into the environment and like alerting us into that mindfulness, I mean, that is what I've been, you know, really gaining from you about. That is what draws us into the magic. That is what mm -hmm. releases... Totally the magic within ourselves. Would you like to I say could, something on that? I just couldn't agree more. Um, you know, we often start the nature journey through our minds, right? Well, I like identifying trees and, and it's like almost like math problems in our heads. You know, we work out, yeah. well, oh, is it, a, is it an opposite or alternate? Oh, it is. And it's got five petals. And, you know, we can get ourselves very analytical, right? Yeah, totally. um, and we've had plenty of analytical training, right? Mm -hmm. We've all done, you know, more than a decade of school and, and we learn that. But give your senses a chance to get the same workout is how I look at it. You know, it's like your senses can do a masterful and amazing things. And they open up channels inside the synergy of your senses. You know, your eyes combined, uh, watching the bird nervously do this, right? Your ears hearing it. Yeah. Your gut twitching it. And then your body subconsciously imitating yes. it. Yes. All the nervous system is activated. And the synergy of that. You, you cannot, there is no way to talk about it in words. It's the magic as you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. That synesthesia, whatever you want to call that, mm. opens up a whole nother level of consciousness. Yeah. And you start to experience the magic. I mean, literally. Mm. But we, people will come and do these bird Literal ma magic. Did you get that? Yeah. Real magic. <laughs> Total magic. Yeah. People will come to bird language workshops. And what we'll do is we'll simply, so, you know, this is everyone together in a group. This is them in their small group. This is the small groups out, each individual sitting in their own spot in the woods. Yeah. They all sit for a half hour. Mm -hmm. They mark their observations in time and space. Yeah. They come back in their small group and they tell the story. Yeah. One person after the next. Yes. Okay. And they tell it in time period. So in time period one, everyone talks. In time period two, everyone talks. And so everyone practices telling the story of their own experience. Yeah. Which then causes the, the nervous system to integrate. And all that stuff, it's like undeveloped film. If you have an experience and then you don't come back and tell it to the grandmother or to yeah. the uncle in the village. Yeah then it just goes away, it just evaporates. That is totally what I've been learning because I've had a lot of these magical experiences and I'm on my own, you know, in the woods just feeling... <sighs> just, wow. Yes. 
big wow. Yeah. And but then with no one to speak of it to, and I sometimes just end up basically feeling like a loony. Mm-hmm. You know, but in this time together with you and with um, to actually have someone to hear the stories and to listen to the stories and to really take it in like it is yeah. something serious and real and real magic. Yes, and that makes that muscle stronger. Yes, it really does. Yeah. And to feel that in everybody, you know, that we start to like glow and radiate mm -hmm. with this. Mm -hmm. You can see that in this workshop, which isn't particularly focusing on bird language. It's yeah. cultural emergence yes. uh, training. It's called Peace, Empowerment, and Cultural Emergence at Applewood Permaculture yes. Farm with Luby McNamara, myself, uh, Maddie Harland, and, and um, Starhawk. Starhawk. And wonderful course, and we're not yeah. we're not doing the bird language thing like I'm talking about. Yes, but we are going out and doing the little thing, coming back in our small affinity groups, yeah. sharing in a little circle, and yeah. then coming back to the big group. That's a powerful model because that's, you know, the, in the, for the longest time, like I've studied ancient cultures all over the world and dropped in with them. You know, not mm. just sort of read about them, but sat with them and watched what they do. They go out in the morning. They all do something different. The ladies are doing this. These men are doing that. The old people are over here doing that. They come back around the fire, they tell their stories to each other. Yeah. And then they go back out and do something else. They yes. come back and tell the stories multiple yes. times a day. And do you know, can you remember when you were little? And, uh, you know, I'm speaking to you, but to, to the viewers as well. Yeah. When you came back in, or maybe you're a parent or an uncle or an aunt, and you see children, and they come running inside, and they need to tell somebody something. Yes. What that is is a deep drive in the nervous system, and it's pushing up a nerve a developing part of your nervous system, your sensory, you know, basically where it all locks in, in the integration point inside your being, okay? Yeah. So this thing is coming up and it's going like that. And it's desperately looking for the hand to reach down and grab it, which is the listening ear and yeah. the listening heart that catches that and pulls it out a little further. Yes. And every time that happens, our nervous system stretches out a little bit more and the antennas get bigger, right? But what happens now is children come running in with an exciting story, nobody wants to listen, and something in the nervous system called pruning happens, and the culture is telling the child that doesn't matter. So boom, it goes away. Yeah. And so now what happens is their eyes read books or watch screens, their ears pick up soundtracks that were invented by somebody else that kind of go with what they're looking at in the game that they're playing yeah. or the show they're watching, yeah. but not the same way as when the J is scolding and your eyes are seeing the J, your ears are hearing the J, your gut is feeling the J, yeah. and your body's imitating it, it doesn't integrate. So modern senses don't integrate. And then what happens when they don't integrate is that sensory process disorder occurs, which is basically epidemic in modern adults yes. and children, but it's really bad with children right now. Yeah. Anxiety, depression, all kinds of things on the spectrum of autism. Um, you know, there's just a ton of... What Richard Louv, the author from the U.S. who wrote Last Child in the Woods, Saving Our Children from mm -hmm. Nature Deficit Disorder, he identified as nature deficit disorder. Yes. Um, and bird language, to me, is the most powerful cure yeah. for nature deficit disorder. It, it, so much of those symptoms just go away when we do this stuff. Yeah, I, I've just come across this book by someone called Joe Harkness, mm. and he was suffering from a breakdown. And he went to the doctor, he received um, medication, mm. um, counseling, meditation. But the book is actually called Bird Therapy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh. And um, tuning into the birds lifted him to a place that none of those other things could. Yes. It's just. And I know most... exactly why. Yes. Because it calls on the ancient nervous system, it's imperative, right? Yes. We're hardwired to understand bird language. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So, John, mm. we are in this chaotic time we don't face that immediate apparent danger of the lion in the grass mm -hmm. but all around us we are all too well aware of many other kinds of lions many other kinds of lions mm. i think of birds as nature's secret agents oh, because like it that. seems to me that they appear in so many environments and for me they they act as a reminder of coming back into now and here and I am alive mm. and I am breathing and to enter the, the wonderful magic of now. Mm. How would you mm. like to end this interview and give a gift to the viewers to uplift them into hope and empowerment, you know, in this time through 
birds. Mm. You know, that it's, that is something that can happen easily in every day. And you don't have to specially go on a retreat or off on a nature thing, but you can make it real just today. In your today. own garden. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, this is very true, and not it's not just us saying it. See, we've got a lot of wild people around here. <laughs> um, and a wild dog. The the birds in our own backyard, well, how can they give us hope? It seems like a stretch, right? But here's what happens. When we literally learn to listen in the four directions, out in front of us, behind us, to our left, to our right, above us, and we tune ourselves to calibrate our ability to hear patterns of sound in three dimensions. Okay, not unlike certain cool songs that you listen to in your headphones, you hear the sound go from this side to that side, like an old Beatles song. Yeah. Um, you know, you hear the voice going between the two speakers, right? Yes. Well, we can do that to a very high level. And if you challenge yourself to be able to hear the birds in three-dimensional space and pinpoint accurately where they are in your own yard, yes, you learn to see them. You don't have to identify them and know exactly what species they are, but just know that's the little bird I always see in the bushes at the side of my house. And you can nickname it, you know, just build a relationship. Squeaky wheel bird is one of mine. Yes, and I met the squeaky <laughs> wheel bird yesterday. I was introduced by Mary Jane to this bird. I said, what is that bird? She says, we call it the squeaky <laughs> wheel bird. Perfect. Um, and so, <clears throat> you know, build that relationship where you get to know them, a thread into a string, you know, the third day out, the string gets a little fatter, the fourth day you keep seeing that bird, you get to know it as an individual, soon you'll get a rope with that bird. Yes. Build ropes with the birds of your own backyard, and the squirrels that hop along the fence, you know, and the rats that sneak around your garden, and the cats that come through, and you start to know that the birds are telling you where the cats are, where the rats are, you know, uh, they'll tell you when people are coming, literally. Um, that stuff starts to get really cool. Now what's happening in your nervous system is that this network is growing that you're not aware of. There's sensory integration happening, provided you get to tell your story. Tell your story to somebody, and if there's nobody to tell it to, write it. Yeah. Write your story, make little maps. Yeah. The mapping thing is critical for our brain. Draw a little map of your yard and say, oh, that's where the squeaky wheel bird was, and that's where the cat came from under the bush. Just look down upon yourself sitting there. That's really powerful. Now what happens is the symptoms of sensory integration are that you'll become happier, noticeably. Yeah. Okay. You'll have more vitality. Yeah. You'll l listen really well, not just to the nature, but people will start to say, wow, you're one of the best listeners I've ever met. I yeah. feel like you're really listening yeah. to me, which is a real gift to people in modern times. You'll feel more empathetically connected to the life around you and the people in your lives, and your pets will suddenly feel more real to you. And then you'll feel like this desire to be helpful and to pay attention. What can I do to be helpful to my planet, to yes. my people? All that will just intrinsically emerge. Yes. The biggest gift that relates to what you're asking for is that hopefulness comes out of a vision. And when you open up your senses in this way, creativity floods in because I think creativity moves through our antenna. The same antenna that pulls in information also activates creativity for some reason. I don't know why, but they are highly linked. The research proves it. Yeah. And creativity yields vision. Vision gives us hope and gives us something to work for. Yeah. And the birds can do that. Yes. And I'll leave you with this thought. An elder that I worked with for many years from the Haudenosaunee, the Ghanaian Gahaga Mohawk people, his name is Jake Swamp. He's an ancestor now, but he, he, his people taught him that we give thanks for the birds because they lift us from our troubled minds. And that's an ancient teaching. And we know it's true, don't we? We totally know it's yeah. true. And you will soon, too. <laughs> May our hearts sing with the song of the birds. Thank you. As we enter the great song of life. Uh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Yes, I will put all you. the links about John's information with this video. Thank you. Look out for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>